explaining I've been rehearsing not telling a New Zealand joke, because they're never funny when it's Australian. Um, just a reference in brand Diageo. Diageo is not known um, as a brand, but it has a collection of brands. So Johnny Walker, Smirnoff, Guinness, Bailey's, Tanqueray. Um, don't hit me up later for the beverages I won't supply, but Pip will. Um, Pip works for our joint venture partner here in New Zealand. Uh, the presentation that I'm going to give you is about a campaign we ran um, back in December of uh, not last year, the year before. And it was a campaign around the devastated floods that happened in Queensland. Interestingly, during the flood time in Queensland, I was in Queensland. My family is originally from the flooded area. And I was there weeks before the flood went down. And close to my family, someone died. So this is a campaign that's quite dear to my heart. <coughs> Um, the time that we reacted is quick, um, and hence why the program has been loved and adored by so many. But before I get started, I wanted to give you an understanding of Bundaberg, the company. You guys don't drink it here, um, but it is our largest brand in Australia. It's about 35% of our total business, and to put that in perspective, it's the second largest spirit brand in Australia. Drunk by over a million people on a four-week basis. It is huge, um, and very much an icon in Queensland. And I'll talk to you about what the campaign was. The campaign is called Watermark. And it'll give you an understanding of what the impact of Watermark was and a pretty simple overview. So let's talk about Bundaberg Distilling Company. The history of this brand is pretty, is pretty iconic and pretty interesting. Founded in a small town, uh, about four hours drive from Brisbane. Um, for reference, that's about 2,000 kilometres north of Sydney. Um, that town is around 40,000 people. Um, the town was founded on sugar cane farming. And if you guys know much about sugar cane farming, when you crush sugar cane, you get a byproduct called molasses. Molasses is thick and it's black and it's eaten predominantly by cows for its high sugar content. In 1885, the cane farmers had too much of it, so they decided simply to make rubber, a pretty ingenious solution to a pretty horrible position. So in 1888, as you do, you found a uh, distillery after seven blokes meeting the pub, so it's a good idea. <laughs> what better way to start a booze company, right? In 1885, you can only imagine alcohol wasn't a particularly accepted product, so this was what quite a controversial move. By, 19, by 1894, it was broke. So just six years after incorporation, the distillery was shut down. At that moment, a group of wealthy farmers and landsmen decided that wasn't good enough. This was a good idea. It's worth investing in. So they put more money in. And since 1894, we pretty much haven't stopped making rum. There's two or three examples of when the distillery shop stopped making rum. It was burned to the ground twice after being struck by lightning. And there was a drought so bad one year, there was no sugar cane to harvest, and therefore no molasses to make rum. But by those three years, or those three times, the distillery has made rum since the 23rd of February 1894. And from that rich tradition comes the brand. So this is the site. Uh, it's the single largest working distillery in Australia, uh, producing roughly about a million cases of rum a year. So a million 12 packs, that's 12 million single bottles. To put that in perspective, um, Captain Morgan, uh, the second largest rum in the world, makes a total of 7 million cases globally. Bundaberg Rum makes a million cases just in Australia. So it's the seventh size of Captain in one singular market. We don't export, it is contained exclusively in Australia. There are some dribs and drabs around the world, mostly by Australian blokes and ladies who drink in the church in London. <laughs> <laughs> see, the river, see the river at the back there? It's called the Burnett River. And as I'll talk to you about later, the Burnett River is a river that flooded. At the back of our distillery, I don't know if I've got a pointer, but if I can, I point to the bond. <laughs> In about 11 o'clock, if you look at 11 o'clock on the dial, you'll see some bombs at the back of that river. That river rose so high, that water hit the back of the bombs. The river rose so high, see those boats in about 10.30? See that house behind them? Those boats ended up at that house. So this place was devastated. The water, the water came in 100 metres of our front door and shut us down for two weeks. These are the cane fields that surround our location. All the core ingredients of Bundaberg Rum come within a spitting distance of the distillery. Like the sugar, like the water, uh, like the power, like everything. The effluent we create and the dunder we create is, is taken back to the market and used for farming. 
So we're a local business, locally crafted. This is a molasses well. It is a three metre deep pit of molasses. It smells like licorice and it is delicious. <laughs> it doesn't look so delicious, but trust me, if you ever get the chance to go to Bundaberg, um, have a look. This is a fermenter. Um, very boring, um, but interesting because that's where we ferment our alcohol. This is a column still. For those who know much about alcohol production, you ferment the yeast and the molasses, you then distill it through a column still and you pull the alcohol off, usually at about 8% proof. Not the best of drinking, you usually drink stuff at about half that. We then stick it in these massive 55,000 to 70,000 litre bags and it is left to age for a minimum of two years. In Australia, unlike any market in the world, rum must mature for a minimum of two years. So it sits in these giant beasts, waiting for um, thirsty blokes to consume. And then we bottle it on site. So it's a completely contained process, from uh, hand, land to hand, wherever you want to define it, but it is an amazing production site. It is Diageo's largest single site in Asia Pacific. So Asia Pacific, Diageo is India to Japan, China to Australia. This is our single largest working distillery. So it's a big business. So let's talk about watermark. I'm going to show you a video later that captures more than what I could ever tell you, but let me just tell you some personal experience. I was on holidays, it's Christmas, I've gone up and seen my family in, in Queensland, I'm out in a rural town called Lady. It's raining heavy, I mean really heavy. Unprecedented, we've had 10, 15 years of drought. We haven't seen rain like this in years, and it is bucketing down, and I'm like, this is serious. We're driving the regional roads looking at, at the dams that are set up. I'm like, this is, this is not looking good. I return to Sydney where I live, and it begins to flood. My parents and all who live in a little town called Laidley are being daily talked about around evac evacuation. The water is rising and there are boats in the street. The distillery goes under, we stop production, we go into crisis mode. From there it escalates. And suddenly the dam that sits at the back of a large town called Brisbane, which is roughly the same size as Auckland, is so full they need to release water. From there the entire town of Brisbane floods and the Brisbane River takes out thousands of people. Several people died, many lost their homes. It was a significant crisis. We had very little time to react, and what you're about to see is the result of about 30 people who came together completely outside their day jobs. All agencies worked um, for free, um, and all of our staff that worked full time worked outside their normal jobs to pull this together from the day this flood went down 13 weeks we executed this program. So check out the video. This is the video from our Khan entry. So um, that's why it kind of is delivered by an ad agency that we are large the wood. <laughs> when the rains come down and the waters rise and flood the land, the waters will peak at a certain point. This point is called the watermark. Authorities in Queensland are grappling with the worst natural disaster in the state's history. This is without doubt our darkest hour. This is the greatest flood that has ever hit Australia. On January 26, 2011, floods devastated more than 75% of Queensland of Australia, an area the size of France, a small city in the north called Bundaberg was among the worst hit. Bundaberg is home to one of Australia's most loved brands, Bundaberg Rum, a brand that has been lifting Queensland spirits for over 100 years. So when that spirit came under threat from the rising waters, we felt a duty to raise it up once again. Rather than just donate money, we decided to create a product that would become the symbol of defiance and resilience and help rebuild Queensland's community spirit. At that point in time, obviously, the question is, do we go again? It was the values of not letting a disaster like that destroy the company that has lived through the ages and lived through the values of London and Rome. It really shows that Aussie character, that true spirit of Australia that says, we will be there, we will go after it, and we will make it great again. So just two days after the distillery was drained, our first act was to create Watermark, a permanent tribute to the towns fighting back from disaster Proceeds from every bottle sold went to help rebuild people's homes, and each bottle carried a message which read, We crafted this limited edition bottle to mark the point where the floodwaters peak, to mark the iron will of ordinary people, 
to mark those who gave to others when their own lives were covered, to mark the spirit in every town on the hard road to recovery. We crafted this bottle to mark the day when people came together, had a drink, a laugh, and kept going. To remind future generations of local fortitude, we went to the 16 areas most devastated by the floods and placed a plaque at the watermark on the walls of their local pub. As a symbol of unity and togetherness, we held the Watermark Music Festival. 16 simultaneous music festivals held in the worst areas at midday on April 16. Some of Australia's biggest bands played and Watermark was sold, with all proceeds going to the flood relief. It's like when the fires went through in Victoria and New South Wales. It's like the floods here. We don't pack a lot of pressure. We're better than that. When Watermark launched to the public, it received overwhelming support. People all over Australia took up the cause of Queensland and joined the spirit. The product then went on sale nationwide. It sold out within seven days and we knew the nation was behind us. Queensland is on the road to recovery and Watermark is here for good as a symbol of resilience and to remind us that no matter how high the water rises, the human spirit will never be broken. So what's interesting about our response to the devastation is the conversations you can imagine the water in the time when what should we do? Can we just give some money? Can we give a million dollars? Can we give half a million dollars? What is the number we should give? You know, and we have companies in our market that are giving tens of millions, 20 millions. And the reality is the cost of fixing is in the billions. So what is going to half a million do for anyone? Absolutely nothing. What is the opportunity for a brand like this part of the DNA of a state to do? Actually to raise the spirits. And that's actually what we believe is our purpose as a business. It's great times, great experiences for people. So we decided pretty much in the midst of the flood that we would wait for the flood to go down and help people get over it. When we challenged the agencies to come up with a campaign, they came up with what I think is an amazing um, sentiment, which is called watermark. What's interesting about the word watermark is it's true. If anyone's been through a flood, there is a literal physical mark left on walls. And from there, that's usually fairly permanent, and people will always remember that. The watermark campaign has gone on to be used by our Thai team in the response to the Thailand floods as well. So this idea has been transferable globally, showing the proof of what a great idea looks like. So what I wanted to do now, if you kind of get a sense of the idea, I'll take you through the impact. And that's not really the point, let's be honest. This wasn't about impact. This was about the opportunity to do something good for the community. It was by nature altruistic. We weren't seeking any impact for the brand for the business. We were only seeking some smiles in people's faces. But nonetheless, there has been impact. We raised circa $937,000. Um, which we put into flood relief activities. We bought boats for the SES in Bundaberg. We invested in those venues that were, 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 um, were wet. And we put on a series of 16 events. This represents a staggering 1,000% um, well, more than we would have otherwise given and puts us in, a, in top um, 16 contributors to the flood effort. Oh, top three, sorry which we would never have achieved if we'd just given money. Um, so the average donation was $278,000. As you can see, um, we were in the top three alongside contemporaries like the Combank with post um, profits that are six to 7,000 times greater than ours. In terms of the PR benefit of impact, which is what you guys are kind of mainly interested in here, we achieved about 7.1 million impressions in Queensland alone. We believe we achieved about four and a half million dollars worth of media value. And here are the impressions in the key areas. And these are the list of the key iconic areas of the flood here. What we were trying to do was have local impact. This was not meant to be about national PR publicity. This was about the raising of the spirits in these Queensland towns. And this is the, um, this is the size of the different areas. You'll see some areas affected had populations of 373 people. We didn't really care how big the population was. It was about whether or not they were affected by water. The brand impact. Um, we put roughly 7,300 people through events, um, through the concert series. As the video said, we did 16 simultaneous events 
in on one day in 16 different venues. The logistical challenge of that um, was extreme. We had trucks um, with stereo equipment and, and mobile stages um, driving around Queensland backing up the venues that didn't previously have any audio equipment. These are only weeks ago pulled pull the water out of their venues. So 16 events on a single day was an extreme challenge. We had extremely good talent as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys know much about Australian music, but Spider Bay reformed to do this. Grinspoon did it, the Whitlams. There are many Australian iconic bands that came and did it. Um, what, I've, what I've got is some quotes from individuals, and I'll let you read those, but these are the, these are the quotes from people, um, local bloggers, um, etc. Whilst commercial gain wasn't the intention, um, we believe there is some positive benefit to the brand. So this is the global impact. Um, more meaningful for the agencies we work with than ourselves, but ultimately some great recognition of a great campaign. You guys can read top to bottom the list of awards that this campaign has won, um, culminating in achieving the uh, titanium mine in Khan. Um, so we, in last year's Khan, Watermark, we won two Khans, was the only Diageo campaign globally recognised. To put that in context, Diageo globally makes some pretty killer ads. We have Johnny Walker, who we've ever seen the Keep Walking project uh, and programs, and Smyrna with the great advertising as well. Um, but this is great recognition for a group of agencies who did this for nothing. And they, they are now using this, obviously, to kind of inspire and motivate their staff and also win, win additional business. So I want to finish a quick overview. That's a fairly speedy run through of, of the program, and I'm happy to kind of in panel and take questions. But really simply, it was the right thing to do. You know, it started from the right place. It wasn't about doing something to try and create a brand benefit. It was doing something because we believed that we had a role in the community we like. It supported the community need. It didn't serve ourselves, it served the community, which I think is critical. And I think when journalists reviewed the campaign and the stories that we were trying to put out, they knew that's what we were trying to do, so they were interested. It helped the people involved. Physically helped the people involved. Um, the 16 pubs that went underwater, the people that worked at those pubs, the people in that community all got benefit from this program. The brand benefited. And our business massively benefited. The, the sense of personal pride across the entire Diageo family, both locally and globally, for us doing this, is unmeasurable. Just doing this makes your business proud to, to be part of the community. We all <laughs> take from the community profit, but when you put something back, the, the people who work for you just feel proud. And when we finished this campaign, and we shared these sort of stories with people in our business and what we did, and the speed at which we did it, people you could just see were just proud that they worked for a company who would do this at this pace. And that's pretty much it for me uh, on Watermark. A campaign that we felt came from the right place that delivered some great, um, great impact for the brand in our business. Thanks.